So now that you've had a tour of some of the great features that Miro has to offer, let's break it down on how to actually set up your own Miro board. There are three versions of Miro board. There is a browser-based option, as well as a desktop app, and a mobile app for Android and iOS versions that you can install. In this video, we will be covering the desktop version, however, they all function identically. To install, follow the link in the description and download the desktop application for your operating system. Miro is a free software for the basic version, and with each account, you can create up to three shared boards. Shared boards are boards that anyone you invite to your team will have access to, meaning that any board created under this account, all members who have the link to it, will be able to access any boards that are created under this account. One thing that I have found useful is to have two accounts so that you can have a player-based board system and a Game Master-based board system and have them separate without the players being able to access the Game Master side of things. Anything more than three boards and you will either need to upgrade, which is rather pricey, or create an additional account under a different email. So once you have the program installed and created an account, you should be at the dashboard. Under the Create Board section, let's click the New Board icon. There are a lot of templates that you can use, however for what we are covering, a blank board will work best, but feel free to check them out. So let's take a tour of some of the useful items in Miro. Once you are at your new board, the first thing that I like to do is to name it. In the upper left hand side you will see a button titled Miro, which will take you back to the boards page as well as the place where you can name your board and give it a description. Also found here are the buttons for Undo and Redo. On the upper right you can access the board settings and some other features that I will not be covering in this video. In the bottom right you will see a map that you can use for easy navigation as well as zooming in and out. In the bottom left there's a toolbar you can add frames, share screens, manage comments, and have a chat window and other utilities. We won't really be going much into those in this video. On the left hand side is a toolbar with the tools that you will use most. This toolbar gives you access to the text tool, sticky notes, shape tool, the connection line tool, pen tool, comment tool, frame tool, Google search images, as well as a host of others. Now that we have the layout, let's give it a test drive and show you how Miro can be used to map out your campaign. To navigate around the stage of the board, you can use the arrow keys, but be careful though, as if you have an item selected, you will move the item instead of the stage. I have found the better way to navigate is to hold down the left mouse button and drag in the direction you want to move. The center mouse button can be used to zoom in and out, or you can use the map window in the bottom right hand corner to zoom. Now that you have the basics of navigation, let's go ahead and add some images. You can add images in a couple of different ways. You can drag and drop them into Miro from your file system. Or you can copy and paste images from the web or take screenshots using the snipping tool from applications like Roll20 or Fantasy Grounds and then simply pasting them in. Or you can even use the Google image search that's built in in the left hand side toolbar. To copy images from the web, simply find an image that you want to use and then right click on the image and select copy image. Then go back into Miro and press Ctrl V to paste it into Miro. You can also use Snipping Tool if you're in Windows to grab a selected image. This is useful to grab in-game screenshots. Once you have your selection, you can simply just copy and paste it right into Miro. Once you have the image you want, let's talk about how to resize it. If you click on the image, you will notice that the image has a bounding box around it and you can use that to resize or to rotate images. Also above the image, a toolbar will appear that gives you the name of the image as well as options of resizing the image, cropping it, or even downloading it, as well as locking it into place. Once you have a couple of images in place, you can use the connection tool to make connections between them. Click on the connection line button in the left hand toolbar or use the L hotkey to select the tool. Draw a line from one image or item to another. You will notice that a toolbar has appeared above the line. With this toolbar you can adjust the size, color, thickness, and type of line you'd like to add. You can even add text to the connection line. So now that we have some content on the board, 
Let's look at actually making them useful. To add a comment, simply select the comment tool from the left hand side toolbar or press the C hotkey and then click on the item you wish to add a comment to. Then add whatever information you wish. With comments, I will give a note of warning. If the resolve slider is pressed, the comment will be resolved and erased. Don't panic if this is done, however, as you can easily undo this by using the undo button, which is located in the upper left hand menu, or simply using the control Z to undo. I find that comments are useful for player collaboration, as players can reply to one another and multiple comments can be added to a single item. You can even color code these comments. Another thing you can do is link an item to a web page, be it a wiki document or even an audio file. You can also link it to another part of the page. To do this, simply right click on the item you wish to link and select the link to option or select the item and press Ctrl K and then paste in your link. In this demonstration, I will link a Google document for notes on the MPC that the players can collaborate on. Keep in mind though that only one link can be added to each item. Another great way to add information to an item is to add a card. To do this, you can go to the three dots on the left hand toolbar or press the D hotkey. With the card tool, you can store many types of different information. Be it text, hyperlinks, cards even have a calendar feature that can be useful for timeline information. I find that the card is a good alternative to the comment tool to add information. Another thing that you can do in Miro is to order items, moving them to the front or to the back, allowing you to create a multi-layered view. An example of this is adding a background image or perhaps overlaying an image on top of another image. To do this, simply right click on the image and select send to back or bring to front. You can then move the image either behind or on top of other images. Now let's talk about selecting, aligning, and moving objects. To do this, you can simply left click and hold and drag the item to wherever you want it to be. Notice that when I do this, that any connecting lines stay attached and adjust to the new location of the item. If you want to select multiple items, you can do this by holding the shift key and dragging a box around the items that you wish to select. Once you have a group of items selected, you will notice that a toolbar pops up and tells you how many objects you have selected, as well as the ability to group or lock them in place. One large piece of advice that I can give is to lock items in place. If you are using this as a collaboration tool, or if you have a multi-layered items such as the background, it makes it much easier to not accidentally move items that you do not wish to move. If you need to move them, simply unlock them and ungroup them and then move them around and then relock them again. This pretty much sums up the basics on how to set up mirror board for mind mapping and RPG. There are many other tools you can use and interesting things you can do with Miro, but those are the basics to get you up and running. I hope that you found this tutorial useful and tune in next time for more on Arkham Audio.